Hello everyone my friends. Have you ever noticed this interesting detail? During the Second World War, Soviet tanks were painted green, while German tanks were painted gray. What was the reason for this? Today, let's try to figure it out together. Right after the First World War, the armies of the leading nations began actively using protective coloring for their vehicles. The main goal was to camouflage tanks and trucks on the battlefield. The most universal color turned out to be khaki, a shade somewhere between green and earthy brown. The French went even further. They began experimenting with multicolored patterns, creating spots, stripes, and outlines on their vehicles that distorted the silhouette of the machine. This was the birth of the first modern camouflage concepts. The Soviet army did not come to this immediately. In the 1920s, when tank units appeared, the USSR also started experimenting with multicolored paint schemes. These experiments were supervised by the famous artist and avant-garde creator Alexander Rodchenko. According to his designs, tanks were painted in dark green with bright green spots. However, mass-produced vehicles continued to receive a uniform green coating. Cheap, simple, and relatively effective. Why green? It blended well with the forested and field landscapes of the European part of the USSR, where, according to the Soviet leadership, the main battles would take place. But it wasn't only about camouflage. In the pre-war doctrine of the deep offensive operation, the priority was speed and interaction between different branches of the military, aviation, infantry, and armored forces. High-quality camouflage was secondary. The main goal was quick identification of friend versus foe, especially from the air. That's why tanks more often received tactical markings and identification stripes rather than complex camouflage patterns. Even in August 1939, when various camouflage schemes were tested, they still failed to implement them fully. Only some tanks in the border districts received unusual paint jobs. The main color remained the same protective green. With the start of the Great Patriotic War, camouflage became even less of a priority. Tank units suffered enormous losses, and evacuated factories in the Urals struggled just to restore production. At that time, there was no concern for appearance. The main thing was that the tank could drive and fire. Later, after 1943, when the Red Army went on the offensive, identification again became more important than concealment. Camouflaged vehicles became even rarer, usually the initiative of individual commanders. And what about the Germans? Until 1937, the German army used a three-color scheme, dark yellow, brown, and green. But closer to the war, everything was simplified. Starting in 1937, a new standard was adopted. All vehicles were painted dark gray. This camouflage suited the tactics of the lightning-fast war, the Blitzkrieg. Gray blended well into the shadows of buildings and trees. On the European theater of operations, where cities are located close to one another, vehicles could merge with walls, bridges, and asphalt. Gray tanks were also less noticeable from the air, especially against the background of highways. Under such conditions, camouflage patterns were unnecessary. In addition, all German equipment, from tanks to aircraft, was painted in matching colors. This simplified production and made visual identification easy. Gray meant German, green meant Soviet. This was especially important in close quarters combat or when coordinating with pilots. Although at long distances, the difference between dark green and dark gray remained minimal. After 1943, Germany's strategy began to crack. The war dragged on, the front stretched out, and tanks were now fighting in the southern steppes, where gray became unsuitable. It was replaced by dark yellow, onto which olive green and brown patches were applied by hand. This scheme was more universal, from Ukraine to Italy. Additionally, equipment sent to Africa was immediately painted in yellow-brown tones. Gray was useless in the desert. From February 1943 onward, gray color disappeared completely. Instead, a simple system was introduced. Camouflage spots were applied by hand over a red-brown primer, often without any strict template. Thus, the dark gray color, a symbol of Germany's lightning-fast victories gave way to the dirty yellow camouflage of a prolonged war. Perhaps you have a different opinion on this topic? Share it in the comments. And if you found my video interesting, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.